What's up, y'all? Back at it once again. It's a coast of fun day, you know. Up here dropping this history and this knowledge and whatnot. And we back and looking at the proceedings of the immigration of the National Immigration Convention of Colored People who held at Cleveland, Ohio in 1854. And this was a national, I said national immigration, and so it had a national backdrop to it, as we're gonna see. You know what I'm saying? This is ran by Martin Delaney, one of the fathers of African nationalism. You know, this one, like I said, this ran by Martin Delaney. And Martin Delaney is a real deep guy. We said we're gonna get more into him, but this is how he built his national organization. Maybe this can help y'all build some keys up to things y'all wanna do. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Constitution. The Constitution of the National Board of Commissioners, because we had a Board of Commissioners back then. Something that many people didn't know about. So as we go through this video, we're gonna highlight some parts, we're gonna cite some parts, and we know break down some parts that's still what Martin Delaney was on and what our ancestors was on back then over hundred years ago. You might notice some slippages in the things about it. And also going to tell some, just prove some lies. Some of these pseudo scholars out here that be reading and talking this and that about black nationalism and, and this, that, and the third. In the next video, we're going to the guts though of this convention. So without no further, you know, blase slippy, let's get into this. The Constitution of the National Board of Commitments of Commissioners, Article One. There shall be a established a national board of commissioners consisting of nine persons to be chosen from and located at a place where the president is to reside, who shall be known as the central commissioners, five of whom shall constitute a quorum to do business in additional two members from each other states. Article two, <clears throat> the officers of the board shall consist of president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, auditor, and special foreign secretary. Article three, the president, vice president, Secretary, Treasurer, Auditor, and Special Foreign Secretary shall constitute the Executive Department of the Board, who should transact any business of emergency in all cases where the quorum of the Board cannot be attained, provided always that it is being doing will lay before a Council of the Board at its earliest opportunity. Article 4. The Board of Commission consists of three departments, Domestic, Financial, and Foreign Relations. Article 5. These departments shall be managed by three committees, the committees on domestic, committee on foreign national, and committee on foreign relations. Only well, got three committees, very streamlined government here. You know, a very streamlined organization. This is a government though, you know what I'm saying? This is a government how you should be ran in a nation inside of a nation. That's why I'm really displaying this. As I said, this organization is intended to be legally incorporated and is having to be published at the end, may consummate that, may be consummated. Article six, <clears throat> the president should preside at all councils of the board, sign all authentic drives to the other treasury for money, and at least once a year, give an intelligent written paper and general statements through the columns of some public journal or the general political conditions of colored people in the United States. The legal attachments, if any, recently passed against them, their domestic advancement of their inter in their intercourse with foreign nations and countries. If in the wisdom of the board brought proper, he shall also have the powers to call count special counsel of the board whenever emergency demands it. Article seven, the vice president in the absence of the president shall perform all his duties. Article eight, the secretary should keep all records of the board of commission and draw all drafts of the treasury for money, seeing that the same is duly authenticated by the attest of the auditor and presented at the same to the president for a signature, and he co signed countersigns the same. Article 9. The treasurer shall hold in trust all monies belonging to the board. Remember, you got to put it in the trust. You got to put your money in the trust so it can't be taxed. All right? That's a very, very good you know, key. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't miss on. Marcus Garvey had the UNIA was a trust. You know what I'm saying? We don't have a trust like that. Other races do have trusts like that for their race. But this one, we don't, us, we don't have a trust like that. So oh, the treasurer, Article 9, the treasurer hall in, in trust all monies belonging to the board, safely deposited in some banking house, pay for all drive properly authenticated as directed by Title 10 of the Constitution, 
and shall be required to give sufficient and ample security for the faithful performance of his duty. Article 10. The, ar the auditor shall have general oversight of the treasury, examining at his presence the books and accounts pertaining to this department, and at months, at least once in three months, make an official report to the board. Once every four year, audit fully audits and accounts of the treasury, make an official annual report of the same. He must also examine the treasury previous signing of the draft and must be satisfied. Before so doing, that the money is properly and legally appropriated. Otherwise, his signature will be withheld and without which no monies may be drawn. But if he is satisfied to the order which is just, he must authenticate the signature of the word attest and the signature filing at the lower margin of the paper on the left extremity below the last line, the action being at the board sufficient guarantee of his attest. Article 11. The Committee of Domestic Relations shall take in kindness of all matters of social, local, municipal, or state interest when pertaining to color people. If thought worthy of note, they shall also continually inquire to investigate in the prices of land and other real estate property and from the time to time lay the same official before the president for consideration of the board with a recommendation to color people to secure immediately as much as possible. So this domestic relations board is all about grabbing land. We had that today. We do not have a committee for domestic relations or just for color people on matters of social, local, and municipal and state interests pertaining to color people, or you know, as I said in this one. And it's always about grabbing land, real estate, and you know, say prices of land and other real estate property. Things we could buy and hold in a trust for the race. Article 12. The committee of financial relations shall have a general management of financial conditions of the board, and shall from time to time inquire into the state of condition, shall originate plans for raising revenue when required, and manage everything properly pertaining to this department, provided that at least once in every three months, and often as required, an official statement of their doings be made to the board and council or the executive with their approval of the same. So the financial, we gotta go through financial audits. Article 13, the Committee of Foreign Relations shall open correspondence with for all foreign countries. We don't have this no more. This is very important too. Directed by the Board of Commissioners, diligently inquiring into and obtaining such information as may be attainable, pertaining to political and domestic relations, climate, soil, and production of such countries. It shall also hold correspondence with the foreign mission, which is sent out by the board to do everything else pertaining to the foreign office and its limits and design in this organization. Always presenting in an official manner, at least once every three months, and as often as required, the results are doing to the presidents who should lay the same before the board or the executive agreement department. Article 14. The board should appoint for a foreign commission to consist not of more than three persons whose business will be to go on foreign missions to countries and places as they may be instructed to make a geographical, topographical, and political inquiry into the states and conditions of those places and people who shall hold correspondence with the Committee of Foreign Relations. Whenever convenient, provided that the official duties and the positions of the colored people in the United States be not compromised and their mission does not exceed one year. It shall also be appointed in a secretary, the special foreign secretary to the Committee of the Foreign Relations. Article 15. In the case of the appointment of either the mission, foreign mission of the nine commissioners or a committee of either departments, the president will have the right to nominate, but the board and council must confirm the appointment. In the event of a nomination being three times rejected, it shall be considered final when a new candidate must be put in nomination. In all cases, however, a simple majority is sufficient for a confirmation. Article 16, two commissioners in each of the several states shall be required to meet the National Board of Commission in Council. Their annual meeting on the 24th of August in each year, and they should take cognizance of all matters of domestic and municipality character detaining of their own state, especially oppressive laws and other acts bearing on colored people, communicating the same to the chairman of the Committee of Domestic Relations, who shall immediately lay the same before the his committee to be presented before the board or the executive. Article 17, the committee in each of their departments shall be independent of each other, 
No one person may be a member of two committees at one time, but the whole shall be elsewhere as answerable to the Board of Commissions and Executive for their acts and wrong and doings. Article 918, in the event of failures to affect the official meetings of the part of either committees, their doings should be laid before the president who shall immediately call for an executive council for the consideration of such businesses, all of which shall be subsequently laid before the Board of Commissioners. Article 19, the board and council, which may at any time call upon the president for any information or papers which he may possess pertaining either to domestic, financial, or foreign relations, when he shall be required at the earliest possible convenience to lay such before such council. Article 20, all official notice pertaining to state interests shall be sent to the Committee of Domestic Relations and the commissions of that state whose duty shall be to immediately action to, on, to take immediate action on a matter according to the instruction of the board. Article 21, the nine and the two other commissions from each state shall be appointed by this convention from the states here represented, who shall immediately proceed to elect their officers. But members from the states which are not here represented shall be chosen by the board of commission and council after their organizations, all of whom shall have their offices for three years or until succeeded by others appointed by a convention held on the basis of the Cleveland platform and the principles of black nationality. Remember, this is nation building. This is the word Martin Delaney used. Use black nationality or black nationalism. You know what I'm saying? But that's all the principles is about. It's about a nation that has its own government within a government. Their own government, not even within the government because they wanted their own land and stuff like that and their own freedom. You know, that's the purpose of getting land and stuff and doing the real estate, the domestic commission, all right? It's all about getting our own nation, grabbing our own shit, not even being bothered with these people. Article 22, the stated council and the board shall be held every Friday in each month. And the quarterly council is the first Friday in April, June, November, and December. Article 23, the board shall have powers to fill all vacancies in their body. The nomination having been presented by the president at least one month previous to the time of confirmation. This has a reference to the central body of the board and those in different states to be regulated according to the time that the nomination is sent in. A month also being allowed from the time when such nomination is received by the president. Article 24. This constitution may be altered or amendment by a convention as referred to such in Article 20, in Article 20, provided that the notice has been given and the intended such alteration, at least one year previously by a regulatory organization convention held in the auspicious of the Cleveland platform, agreeing, agreeing in principles and sentiments with this convention. You know, this is the deep stuff we gotta be talking about, how these organizations got set up. Here's the organizations of the National Board of Commissions, because it was already done. You know what I'm saying? Many people don't know about this. Let's go through the names. The Central Commission, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right. The president, off rip, is Martin Delaney. The vice president, William Webb. The treasurer, Thomas A. Brown. Auditor, Edward R. Parker. The secretary, Chas W. Knighton. Professor M. H. Freeman is the special foreign secretary. Samuel Vernable, Alfred Johns, Samuel Bruce, and Parker Sowell. In the departments, the Committee of Domestic Relations, Samuel Bruce is the chairman, Samuel Vernable, and Senator East Knighton, and that's the head of that department. The head of the Financial Relations Department, Thomas H. Brown, chairman, Parker Sowell, and Alfred H. Hearns, Johnson, Alfred H. Johnson, excuse me. Foreign Relations, Reverend W. William Webb, chairman, Martin Delaney and Edward R. Parker. The foreign secretary, as you said before, is Martin H. Freeman, AM. And let's break it down by the states, because it was broken down by the states too. Massachusetts, right? William C. Neal, Boston. Chas L. Roman, Salem. In New York, Buffalo. Chas J. Whitfield and Theodore J. Holly. Ohio, Cincinnati, Augustus R. Green, Peter Tolliver, Jr. In Michigan, Detroit, William C. Monroe, William Lambert. 
Kentucky, Louisville, Conway Barber and Jazz H. Gibson, Missouri, St. Louis, Reverend Richard Anderson and Reverend John Brown, Jordan Brown, excuse me, Virginia, Richmond. Yeah, when I'm in the South, now we're going down to the South. We had this connection going deep. Now we're going down South. Missouri is a slave state at this time in 1854. Virginia is a slave state, you know what I'm saying? Richardson Henderson, John E. Ferguson, Richmond, Virginia, that's the capital of the Confederacy. Tennessee, Nashville, Elder Peter H. Laurie and Charles Barrett. Louisiana, New Orleans, Jordan B. Noble and Reverend John Girl. California, Harry M. Collins and Orange Lewis. Note, the commissions who will stand appointed in the list were referred to the Constitution of the National Board of Commissioners for their duty. Other states who have received no appointments and request to send their owner in their names. Two from the same town or district, if possible, to the board at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Each state may be fully represented in the board. So California, I think mean, California was just barely a state and they got represented it. You know, this gives the resident address where they lived at, you know what I'm saying, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A lot of stuff came out of Pittsburgh uh, with this group. A lot of stuff came out of Pittsburgh with this group. So let's see the remarks. The proceeding of the convention, according to Resolution 13, should have issued with one month in adjournment of the same, would have done but the outbreak of cholera in the city during the month of September, which for a fortnight put nearly all the business to a standstill. Those names of the delegates marked with the asterisks, thus were absent from the convention. This note shall be suspended at the end of the list when inadvertently, inadvertently omitted. Okay, we got another thing about how a new name was spelled wrong. Da, 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 da. But this is how you build up a national organization. They had a constitution, as you see, they had it flowing, they had people in the organization, and it was all black, and it's about black nationalism, or what do you call black nationality? which is in the constitution they had written because they wanted their own land and their own people over here in the United States. What's part of the United States today? They wanted their own stuff. As I said before, California was represented, even though it probably wasn't a state by then in 1854, maybe, maybe so, yeah, maybe a young state. Louisiana and a lot down south, Louisiana, New Orleans, Tennessee, Nashville, Richmond, Virginia, Missouri, Kentucky, you know? So it was, it was, it was a lot more down south in a region where we had these things set up during chattel slavery, you know, set up by Martin Delaney, you know, a national organization. Anyway, so hopefully I learned something and got some from this because this is a very important factor that, you know, many cats don't talk about. The next video we're going to do on the, on the proceedings of national immigration of color people, we're going to read the guts. And you're all going to be surprised about what it says. And then, you know, the stuff we got to look at where we're going to what it is. It was never to join into the oppressor system to vote and all that type of things like that. They talk about elective selective. But it was about having our own country, our own land. You know what I'm saying? But we know what we can do and we know we have the power to do all that stuff. We still do got the power to, to run our own stuff. We can really do it like this. Take an article, take a page from this, take a page from that, put all that stuff in a trust, you know, form our own banks things of that nature to get stuff going. So that's why we look at this stuff in the past. Now, another thing too, I have to say, a lot of young cats are trying to distance stuff from the past and they getting um, misled, I should say. That's the best way to put it. You know, where they don't think this old scholarship is still worth it, you know what I'm saying? So they get some scholarship from a foreign or faker and a fool that don't know no better and some armchair type cat that ain't really did the dirt, you know, and they get confused. That's one of the main reasons I drop it and I read line from line from like I do. You know what I'm saying? So they can understand that no, that was not what was said. This is what was said. And this is what they wanted. You know, we always wanted a nation, point blank, period. You know, no, uh, no, no regard, none less, none more, none less. And we gotta be, who's gonna be that generation to finally get that nation? You understand me? That's the key in the task. Anyway, this is Coast Get Funny. You have a wonderful day. You have a good one. Peace.